Hey guys, it's Gamer, and I'm back with another Call of Duty Mobile video. And uh, before we go ahead and jump right into the video, I wanted to give a big shout out to Caleb for the gameplay. I thought you guys would enjoy a different perspective uh, this time around, as he does play on an iPhone 12 Pro, whereas I play on the iPad Pro. Um, so all of his socials will be linked in the description. Uh, and without further ado, let's get into the video. So today I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about Ranked. More specifically, what I think the COD Mobile team could do to make it a ton better. Because right now, to put it bluntly, it's a mess. Now, I know that I've been very vocal about this on Twitter and previous videos. And I just wanted to bring a few things up first. So, some people like to argue against my statements about Ranked. Where they say to me that COD M Ranked is just casual Ranked. And my response to that is that statement literally makes no sense. Casual is casual and ranked is ranked. You are literally playing for a rank and going against people of your skill level that is based on that rank you get. So yeah, that's not casual. Uh, I also want to point out that the COD Mobile team used the ranked playlist for their qualifiers 1 and 2 for their COD Mobile Championship that will no doubt have a massive prize pool. So yeah, it's not casual. The other thing I wanted to point out is that Ranked is not something new specifically for COD Mobile. It's been around literally four years. Uh, more specifically, since 2012, when Black Ops 2 first released a Ranked playlist, the first ever for Call of Duty, called League Play. Even then, Treyarch, the team behind Black Ops 2, knew that people wanted a mode where they played for a rank and played competitively without any broken weapons, score streaks, or perks, or anything that would prove to be unskillful. So keep that in mind as we go through all this because I'm going to bring it back up again in more detail later in the video. I'm also going to be talking sometimes like this in order to provide verbal emphasis on things. So uh, yeah, let's get to it. Alright, so first we're going to be talking about the problems in the ranked system in its current state. And then after that we'll talk about my solutions for them. So stay tuned for the entire thing because I go very much into detail here. Alright, so let's go. Number one, the Holger LMG. So this weapon has been shown to have a pretty crazy damage range. And I'm sure you guys don't believe me. So uh, let me just bring up this tweet from Path, who is very well known for his COD Mobile stat breakdowns, where he says, and I quote, the Holger's time to kill over range is a little too crazy. He then continues to talk about how it should be reworked in this six page document that he made, uh, and throughout the document he talks about his own personal opinion on buffing the mobility of it when you convert the holder to an AR with uh, certain attachments. But later on he talks about just how broken it is at ranges where he says, and again, I quote, when converted into an assault rifle, the Holger 26 still retains its LMG-like range profile. This means it will have better damage range than almost all of these assault rifles while killing faster than more than half of them. So yeah, right below that, um, there is some tables comparing the Holger to other ARs and LMGs, and it just basically just shows you the difference. So yeah, it needs a rework, nerf, whatever you want to call it. Okay, number two, persistence. So with more and more score streaks that are releasing every season now, I am noticing a lot of people using persistence. And if you guys still don't know what persistence is by this time, it basically allows you to retain your score streak progress even after you die, but uh, the score streak score is doubled. Uh, but also keep in mind, you can combine this with Hardline, which allows for you to get the streaks a lot quicker. This does not belong in ranked. Score streaks like the VTOL, for instance, can turn around a game so fast, and if someone can pretty much get it guaranteed in a match with no consequence, that's not balanced. Number three, Thermites. I know, I know. They nerfed it this season, and I am super thankful for it. I even did a video exclusively talking exactly what they changed and how thankful I was for the nerf, but it still needs some work. Now, I'm not talking about the damage because the damage has been lower and it's good. I think it's in a good state right now. What needs work is the damage radius. It is just way too damn big. So uh, again, I'm going to bring up Modern Warfare because their Thermite is basically what is, was brought over to COD Mobile. 
And in Modern Warfare, they're thermite. The only difference is that the radius is balanced. It's very small. It's how it should be, and it's balanced in that game. In COD Mobile, I want to say it's at least double the radius, and I'm not kidding here. Uh, it also still has a bug where if you attempt to throw a Semtex anywhere in the vicinity of a Thermite, even if the Thermite is still in the air, you will blow up and die. So being that the radius is so large on the Thermite, you die pretty much every single time you have a Semtex. Now, I know I'm going to see people saying, oh, just use a different grenade, you know, stop crying about it. That, that literally does not fix the problem. That just avoids the problem. And people use Semtexes for a good reason. Like myself, I like it more than the frag because it has more damage and it sticks to surfaces. So, yeah. Number four, Shock RCs. Again, <laughs> I already know what people are going to say about this. Just put Cold Blooded. And I cannot stress enough just how wrong that is, again, because that just makes Cold Blooded a crutch perk, strictly because of the Shock RC. So, a crutch anything is something that without it, you are at a massive disadvantage. Now, I'll give you guys an example. Back in Black Ops 2, Flinch had a pretty big play in gunfights. So much so that Toughness, which was a slot 2 perk, became a crutch perk, meaning that everyone and their mother had it equipped on their class because it severely reduced your flinch when shot at. Therefore, made it a crutch perk, because without it, you'd be at a massive disadvantage. So, you guys see where I'm getting at? So, yeah, the Shock RC itself has a pretty low score to reach for a streak, so a lot of people can get it just super, super easily. And it basically drives around, finds you, and shocks you. And what that does is it just freezes you in place, for a couple of seconds, you were unable to move, shoot, aim, nothing. And the only way you can get out of it is uh, if it runs out, you die, or you like tap super, super fast to disable it. But that doesn't matter because no matter how fast you tap, it's still enough time for someone to come and kill you and grab their free kill. And uh, if not, you know, from the person who called the RC, but from their teammates. So yeah, that's, that's, that's broken. Number five, solo queuing. So this is pretty much straightforward. So uh, basically, if you try to queue for a ranked match as a solo player, you can be put up against partied people, which uh, puts you at a good disadvantage, obviously, as you have no real communication with your teammates. You don't know, you know, if your teammates are good, bad. Um, but yeah, other Call of Duties, I fix this. Basically, that if you try to go into a solo queue, you'll get put up with people that also solo queued. So that's like a very easy fix for that. Number six, ranked point allocation. So this is gonna take some explanation. So right now, I think the allocation of the points per game is a bit broken in the sense that if you win a match, you can gain like 50 to even like 80 points, which is nuts. But if you lose a match, you can e sometimes like gain a point. I'm not even kidding, you can gain like a single point because you played really well that game even though you lost or you'll lose like three points, which is just not a consequence at all for losing. So basically that's what makes it so easy for full-time players to reach such high ladder points, because if they lose, they lose pretty much nothing and they can just pretty much just keep on playing and adding up those 50 plus points per game. Number seven, no rule sets. Uh, so right now the ranked playlist is uh, pretty much public matches just without bots and against people of your rank. Um, so, uh, with no rules, that means everything and anything goes, including non-competitive items. So, uh, with every single Call of Duty that has had a ranked playlist, there has always been some sort of rule set or restrictions built into it. So, let me show you some examples here. So, back in Black Ops 2, which, remember, was the first game to ever have a ranked, like, mode in their game, okay? So if we take a look at it here on um, the score sheets, um, there are a few things that are restricted. So UAV, Hunter Killer, Care Package, Counter, Guardian, and Visa. All those were banned, meaning that if you had any of these in any of your classes, you could not use that class. In terms of perks, they banned Hardline and Ghost. And then for perk two and three, they didn't ban anything. Uh, for secondaries, they banned the SMA and the RPG because any sort of free fire rocket launcher is not skillful. Basically, they, they only let the FHJ allowed because it's a lock-on because it's literally meant for you to take down streaks or equipment or whatever. Uh, in terms of lethals, they banned the Bouncing Betty, the C4, and Claymore. So, Bouncing Betty is pretty much a trip mine, if you guys didn't know. Uh, but yeah, there's that. 
And uh, taking a look at Black Ops 3's ranked system, uh, it was a little bit different. They call it Arena this time, but it's pretty much the same thing. So they had some restrictions. So UAV, Care Package, Guardian, uh, Sentry, Hater, were all banned. Um, for their own reasons, I mean, again, the streaks per game, you know, vary. they different, you know, uh, something in one game can be OP in another, if it's like, you know, even if it's like the same thing. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, in terms of perks, they banned Sixth Sense, which uh, basically is what High Alert is right now, where you'll have kind of indicator on your screen to show if someone's looking at you. Uh, they also banned Ghost. Uh, for perk 2, they banned Tracker. Uh, and for perk 3, they didn't ban anything there. Uh, in terms of lethals, they banned the Trip Mine and C4. And if you look closely, you can actually see there's a Thermite. And funny enough, I played Black Ops 3 since the beginning, and I don't remember a single person using a Thermite because in this game, it was really bad. So there's no need to ban it because literally no one used it. It was just a really bad lethal. <laughs> now, Black Ops 3 did have a little bit of a difference from Black Ops 2's uh, rank system because on top of the restrictions, they also had a ban and protect system. So before you loaded into match, you had to make sure you didn't have any restrictions, first of all. Um, but then once you got in, you got into this little side menu where basically each player of each team would either ban something, whether it be a weapon that they didn't want, you know, the other enemy team to use, a score streak, a perk, a lethal tactical, um, even a operator skill. It didn't matter. So basically you can ban something or you can protect something. So um, that system, I mean, I think is a little bit overboard for Call of Duty Mobile, but it's just something I'd let you guys know just how important they wanted rank system to be fair. Okay, last but not least, number eight, uh, the Sparrow. So this is just a small thing, but uh, I personally believe the Sparrow needs a bit of a nerf um, to its fire rate primarily. So I did a video showing a comparison between COD Mobile Sparrow and Black Ops 3 Sparrow, along with uh, many, many other things. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'll put a link for it down in the description if you guys are interested. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much nine day of just how the Sparrow functions from COD Mobile to Black Ops 3, um, which had a two. But most importantly, the fire rate was just, it's just ridiculous in COD Mobile. So, yeah. Okay, after hearing all of that, let's talk about my solutions to these problems. So, number one, rework on the Holger. Pretty straightforward. But yeah, the Holger just needs a rework um, to its damage range primarily, because right now it's just way too overpowering. Two, placement matches. So I think this will fix a problem that I didn't really list, but it's something that I think is really, that just should be noted. So basically with every previous Call of Duty out there that has had a ranked mode, there has always been placement matches in the beginning of each season. So basically um, once a new season would hit, your rank would be reset and you have to play five to 10 matches without a rank. And given those results based on if you win or, or lost the match, um, your score per minute that game and just overall personal performance in comparison, you know, to the entire match you just played in, it would give you a rank based on those matches that you played. So you will just go up from that ranked. So uh, basically it, that should theoretically reduce queue times in the beginning of its season and allow players who don't play ranked just right off the bat in the beginning of the season to not just utterly destroy people as soon as they get on. So I think this will be a good system to have. Let me know what you guys think about that, um, but yeah. Okay, so for Persistence, Shock RCs, and Thermites, these would all fall under the rule set solution that needs to be implemented into the playlist. So uh, basically, if you have any of these items in your custom classes, you will not be able to use those classes because those are restricted. So um, I think this will make winning require more skill instead of you just relying on certain just crazy items in the game. Um, now, let me show you guys something interesting. So for the COD Mobile Championship, the COD Mobile team provided their own rule set. Okay, so I'm gonna put it on screen here. Basically all the stuff in white is their rule set. This is what you're gonna see for the COD Mobile Championship, okay? Now, like for the, for the most of it, it's pretty good. It's, it's pretty good. Like they did very, very good with it. The only thing that I personally would add is going to be here in blue text. So for the weapons, I had the SMRS because that's just a free fire um, RPG. And I feel like the only the FHJ should be allowed because it's a lock on the only launcher and it should not be used for killing players. Just streaks. Um, everything else looks pretty damn good. Um, for perks, 
I added probably the most here. So they only ban persistence and restock, but I would also ban tracker, ghost, high alert, alert, demo expert, and hardline. All of that basically to remove that just so it gives everyone kind of a fair ground, you know, to stand on for that. Um, let me know what you guys think about that. But that pretty much also lines up with Black Ops 2 and Black Ops 3, like just how they did the restrictions as well. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much what I would add. Everything else is from them. Pretty spot on. If they can just implement this right into the ranked system, that would be great. Uh, solo queuing, uh, that can easily just be fixed. Honestly, just simply just not being able to match with teams. Just have solo queue guys match only with solo queue guys. Um, and yeah, pretty straightforward there. As for the ranked point allocation, um, I think it should be changed a bit so that losing gives you more of a consequence rather than simply a nice, you know, little participation sticker and a nice pat on the back because that's kind of what it feels like right now. So with that said, I personally would have it so that if you win, you have a certain threshold based on the win and personal performance, whereas you cannot exceed more than 30 points. Also, if you lose, there would also be a threshold where you cannot lose more than 30 points, but you also have a minimum limit of 15 points, strictly just for losing the match. So uh, this would also be based uh, on the your loss, if you lost, first personal performance. So let's just say if you lose the game, but you're also the bottom of your team, you would lose 30 points for that. But if you lost a match and you were like, let's say the top of your team, you tried like the hardest, you were the best on your team, then you would only lose like 15 points because that would be the minimum. So nothing less of that, but also nothing more than 30, if that makes sense. So basically it balances everything out instead of winning just being such an advantage over losing, which basically gives you no consequence. So I think this would really, really balance out the leaderboards and just help out the rank system entirely. Uh, as for the Sparrow, uh, again, I would just reduce the fire rate. Um, I would also say to make it fire Semtex projectiles, like Black Ops 3's Sparrow, but that might be asking a bit too much. Uh, but yeah, just something to keep in mind. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Ranked, and I really think if they do all of this, uh, Ranked can be an actual competitive mode and not simply just another version of public matches of people who just sweat and use just the broke the most broken stuff in the game <laughs> um but yeah let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and uh yeah i will uh, see you guys in the next one